I was in Toronto um, in 1991. I was teaching in Toronto. I was a helper for a teacher. I didn't know that at that time I would be a teacher. And I was just a helper. So I go with the rabbi and he, he tell me, you know, we need to raise some money for Israel. Just go knock on doors on Sunday. So me knocking on doors, I'm not good. I'm my English. And that. Just knock on door, say the name of the school in Yerushalayim and Jerusalem, and that's it. So I said, my God, this is the toughest job I ever did. So I'm going. I have a little briefcase. I don't know if you ever did it. Invoice and, uh, and a few books that we give or we sell it. And I go door to door. All of a sudden, uh, a voice hit me. First time, I remember the first experience. So the voice started talking to me. It used to happen to me when I was young. And it started telling me information that doesn't make sense. It told me 10 days down, it will be a red door. There will be a mezuzah on that door. You need to get them. And I said, stop it. Like I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm really going crazy. I slept two hours last night. Of course, Michigan, the brain is like making you. Then I didn't eat all day long. It's going to be sugar problem. I don't know. And I keep going. I'm not listening. I'm not. Just no, avoid. Avoid. I'm telling you, avoid you. Because you might go in crazy. I remember I'm talking to myself. You're losing your mind. And you, if you give it up, you're going to really lose your mind. So don't listen to it. And I remember, I'm so proud of myself that I'm winning it and I'm not listening to it. <laughs> the scary part, 10 doors down, there is a red door. And there is a mezuzah. So I'm going to skip that door. I'm doing dafka. Those of you know what dafka is. like. A, it's a Jewish thing that I'm doing on purpose. I'm not going to knock on the door. But, you know, Jewish is curious. I'm stepping down. And I want to go back. I really want to go back. So I decided to go back. The voice came back. <laughs> <laughs> they said, I'm young, 91, I was younger. So it was scary for me. The voice tell me, uh, just please, when the person opened the door, just tell him that I'm saying I'm sorry. So who say I'm sorry? What's sorry? I don't know what, uh, who I'm talking to. So I'm knocking on the door and I said, okay, Elio, it's an experience, it's an adventure. Well, let's see what's going to happen. So I'm knocking on the door. And there is a big guy opening the door. like really big, like, like a good football player. And I'm looking at him, so, and I'm start to calculating. You know, say, I'm sorry, he will punch me, and then I don't want a problem. Just just let me stick to the plan. I'm coming from Yeshiva at Kol I have these books that we print. If you want to buy it, good. You want to give charity, good. Goodbye. I want to keep it short. I remember I said to myself, keep it short. That's what I did. I didn't want to listen to my voice. Say, hi, uh, shalom, book, no. And I want to finish it quickly. Charity, I, I purposely did it short, not even collusive, so he can kick it, me out because I want to get out of that. Charity, is, uh, no. Uh, so he, he, the door was still open. Usually he closed the door. He was Israeli. So I said, listen, I'm, I want to tell you something, but you might think I'm off, and I am off. I feel I'm off, but I don't know. And he's that, by that moment, he started to feel like I'm, I'm off, like this guy's weird. I'm just knocking on his door and say, what? I say, I want you just to know that there is a female voice talking to me, said she's very sorry. Quiet. So why don't you come inside? So I'm, me get scared a little bit, I say, come inside, meaning bury me, or come inside, meaning welcome. I don't know the guy, don't know him. So okay, coming inside. So I remember I'm talking to myself, I'll be brave. Be brave, you're strong. Nothing to worry. So I'm sitting there, sitting on the couch, and he brings his wife. And they both look at me, so, and they're holding their hand, okay, tell us the message. I say, guys, I'm, I don't have any message. I don't have any message. I will tell you the story, it will be weird. It's walking down the street, I'm raising money and selling books. It's all what I do, my life. Simple guy. Just arrived to Toronto three months ago. And they told me to do that, I'm doing that. And a weird voice, female voice, come into my head, tell me, this red door, mezuzah, knock on the door, and the female voice want to apologize for the man, not for you, he said to the lady, for you, and say, I'm sorry. And then the guy starts crying. So I have no idea what's going on. So he's crying, and he went to his room, his wife stayed with me. She said, what is your name? I said, Eliyahu. So what do you do? I said, I'm, I'm studying, you know, Torah, Kabbalah, the best I can. And she told me, don't worry, whatever books you want to sell, we bought it. Any charity you ask, you have it. So don't, don't worry, you're not wasting the time with us. Said, okay. No problem. I said, what, what's going on? Can you share with me what's going on here? 
So she took me to the kitchen. She lo- showed me a, a Nashama candle, you know, a, 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 um, a Yorkshire candle. So, wow. Oh, so what's happened? Said so this is his mom. His mom committed suicide 10 years ago. He could never forgive her for 10 years. He, he doesn't want to talk about her. Not even one word. Tonight, this is their death anniversary. He decided to light a candle. First time. He decided to light a candle for his neshama, for his mom. And he walk in. What do you think? And I said, listen, I'm not, I'm not that great at all. I like this. I'm not that great in that. It just, I'm walking. The voice, that. And uh, I sat with them uh, and we connect in a very spiritual way, I have to say. And they start studying. But what I'm trying to tell you, the voices that you hear with your own voice or other people's voice, be open for it. Don't close it. This is one advice I want to give you. Don't, don't, don't shut it off. Don't think you're totally nuts because you're not. Those things are happening. The Ari explained that the Megidim talking, just hear, just relax and listen. They guide you, ask. But if you're not in a position to ask, then you have ego. What's the difference between somebody with ego and somebody with no ego? Being humble is to ask for help. Having ego is never to ask for help. Human beings that never ask, please help me, please guide me, please show me, that just mean the ego is all over them. It doesn't matter the reason, it's because of insecurity or overly secure. It doesn't matter, but it's an ego. And ego is bad for your soul. Being humble is to be in a position that you actually say, I need help. I need help. Help me. Help me. By the way, that was the first time it happened, but it never stopped since then. Never stopped since then. And the decision that I have to make with my life, and my wife can sit and tell you a thousand story, was only based, only based on that specific story. So when somebody tells me, how do you do it? What do you see? What Don't see. I ask. I don't know. I'm in a position that I never know what's the right thing to do.